Lookup tables, also known as LUTs, are a great way to take your log footage and convert it back to a proper color space like Rec. 709 and or add a stylized graded look to that very same footage. And so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add and remove custom LUTs in Final Cut Pro to add to your footage. And there's actually a couple of different ways that you can handle this. So let's talk about it. So jumping right into Final Cut Pro here, what you're going to see is I have a clip here that was shot on my Sony a7S III in S-Log3 S Gamut 3 Cine. Now Final Cut Pro has both camera LUTs and custom LUTs that you can apply to your footage. So what is the difference between these two? Camera LUTs are truly designed to convert your log footage back to a color space like Rec. 709 or Wide Gamut HDR, whatever your library is using. Applying a camera LUT to your footage is going to apply at the media level and really take effect for the clip within the entirety of your library, and is designed to be processed before any other clip effects or anything else that falls in your timeline. Now custom LUTs, on the other hand, are designed to be able to be added to any clip or any section of a clip within any project in Final Cut Pro and can occur at any different order in the way of of effects processing and what you have in your timeline. Truthfully, what custom lets you add where and how you apply them is ultimately going to be up to you. And I'm going to say in a lot of cases, you might not even notice a difference when and how you apply these. But if there's one takeaway I would have, it is that camera LUTs are designed to apply as the first thing in your footage as sort of a log conversion or converting back to a proper color space. And custom LUTs are really designed for more grading and kind of custom stylized looks. So because in this case we're working with log footage, I want to convert this back to Rec. 709 and I'm going to apply a camera LUT and add a custom camera LUT in this case to Final Cut Pro. So what I'm going to do here is go over to the info inspector on this clip and I am going to scroll up here until I find the camera LUT section. Now what you're going to notice is if you first go over to the info inspector and you are on the basic tab here, you're not going to see that option. So you're going to want to make sure you go over to the extended section so you can find the camera LUT option. Now once I do this, Final Cut Pro has has a bunch of built-in LUTs I can pre-select. Now I would normally choose S-Log3 and S-Gamut3.Cine 3 because of course I shot this on my A7S3 in S-Log3, but in this case I want to add a custom LUT and change it to that instead. So let's do that. So specifically, I'm going to go to add custom camera LUT. And then from here, I'm going to go over to where I have whatever my LUT file is that I've saved, which in this case is in this LUTs folder. Now it's worth noting that Final Cut Pro does accept both .cube and .mga files in terms of adding custom LUTs. I would say in most cases in practice, you're going to end up using .cube files for this. And this is a pretty universal standard for adding LUTs in other programs and other mediums. So I would say .cube files are the way to go for most people if you have an option. So I'm going to actually choose this S709 LUT, which is basically Sony's S-Log3 to S-Cinetone-like look that was applied to cameras like the Venice, and that is used to give sort of that similar look for other cameras shooting in S-Log3. Once I choose this, I will hit open. And what you're going to see here is now, on top of selecting it, you will see that I have now a custom camera LUT option, which is this S-Log3 to S709 LUT. And as you can see, it is applied now, so I can go back to not having any LUT applied, I could choose one of the built-in default LUTs like S-Log3, S-Gamut 3 Cine, or again, I can choose the custom camera LUT that I just imported and use that instead. And of course, from here, if I wanted to, I could go in and start grading this in some custom form just to give this sort of the stylized look that I want, whatever that might be. But in this case, the main point here is that we have added a custom camera LUT and we are working with it now in Final Cut Pro. But let's say now I actually wanna take that LUT that I imported in as a camera LUT and remove it from Final Cut Pro altogether so that it no longer appears as an option. Now, this is something usually not as transparent in Final Cut Pro as adding a LUT, but I'm going to show you how you can do this as well. Now, what I'm going to do first is remove this LUT from any clips or project that I'm using it on because simply if I were to remove it from Final Cut Pro as you're now seeing on screen it's going to show an error once I take the LUT out of the program. So specifically we're going to just flip this over to the standard S-Log3 S-Gamut 3 Cine, which is fine. And what we're going to now do is back in the Info Inspector and in the Camera LUT option we're going to go down to Reveal in Finder which is the last option here in this drop down menu. And what you're going to see here is Final Cut Pro has directly taken us to the folder where these LUTs live on the system. And in this case, I see the slog 32 s 709cube LUT that we just added. So I'm going to just take this, right click, and move to trash. And we'll clear out my trash just for this example. And what you're going to now see initially when you go back to Final Cut Pro is that you will still see this LUT in the list, but it is now grayed out. And this is because Final Cut Pro keeps this cached for a time while the program is still open. But what you're going to see is if we close Final Cut Pro, the next time that we reopen it, it will now show the LUT as no longer being present at all in the list, and we have truly removed it from the system. So here we are back in Final Cut Pro after we have just closed and reopened it. And what you're going to now see in the camera LUT section here 
is that that old kind of lingering grayed out S709 LUT no longer appears as an option, and it has been truly removed from Final Cut Pro. But again, this is only showing one half of the equation because camera LUTs are designed sort of for conversion. So what if we want to add or remove a custom LUT to Final Cut Pro and show what this looks like? So in this case, I'm going to just go back to the Info Inspector and turn this to none just to demonstrate this. So we're back to the standard S-Log3 footage that we had. And here's you're going to see in the effects browser to the right, I'm going to actually just search for custom LUT and you can see that option comes right up. But what I'm going to do is take this and directly drag it over right onto the clip. Now once I do this, you'll see if I go over to the Video Inspector tab here, the Custom LUT option now applies, and you can see that this allows me to essentially do in many ways the same things we could do with the camera LUT, but just with a bit more granularity. So once we go to the drop down here in the Custom LUT section, what you're going to see is we have very similar option here to choose and add a Custom LUT. So I'm going to do this. Now, similar to before, this brings up my menu here, and this will let me choose from different LUTs I have. Again, I'm going to choose that S709 one and the .cube file that it has. And you'll see here that I can choose color space as well. So this is helpful, say, if we were working with a LUT designed for HLG in Rec 2020, and we wanted to change the color space it's working in. In this case, we're just working with Rec 709, so let's stick with that. And I'm going to hit open. And again, much like before, it has now selected this LUT that I've imported, and you can see this now appears as a custom LUT option. And because this is a standard effect on the actual clip, I can kind of move this around in different orders and apply it in a different sequence of things, whereas with the camera LUT, this was always going to be the first thing that gets applied. And now let's say we want to remove a custom LUT from Final Cut Pro. In this case, what we're going to do is very similar to just what we do when we're moving a camera custom LUT. So here I'm going to click back on the custom LUT section and the drop down and go to Reveal and Finder. And very similarly, we have a custom LUTs folder Final Cut Pro has dropped this into, and you're going to see we see the LUT that we just brought in, also with that Apple LUTs file. Again, I'm going to remove it, and again, because I did not choose a different LUT initially, you're going to see that Final Cut Pro as showing that the LUT is now missing. So in this case, I think we'll just go back to none. And what you're going to see is in the list, this LUT still kind of shows in a grayed out sense, but the next time we close and reopen the program, this LUT will be completely gone and we've cleared it out. But I want to go back to that finder location that Final Cut Pro keeps bringing us back to, because here in lies an interesting little trick and secret with applying and adding LUTs in Final Cut Pro that really isn't explicitly noted. So let's say I have an entire collection of LUTs that I want to add into Final Cut Pro. Maybe this is located in a bunch of different folders, or I'm bringing over a collection of LUTs from, say, one person's Mac to another, and I want to make sure I can do this as simply as possible. Technically, the location where these LUTs live is standard and universal pretty much per each Mac. Now I'm going to show you this file location on screen, of course, below me, but what you can do is actually navigate over to this yourself in Finder, and what you're going to see is this is exactly where Final Cut Pro is bringing you each time you click the Reveal in Finder option. So if we go back over to Finder and I do Command-Shift-G, you'll see that right now I have gone to my internal library folder in my users directory, but let's just start from scratch here. If I do tilde forward slash library and then application support, and then Pro Apps, what you're going to see is this is going to bring me to a folder where both these camera LUTs that we are working with previously and these custom LUTs are applied. And as noted, these are the two locations that Final Cut is bringing you to when you click the Reveal and Finder option. So much like you can just delete LUTs right out of here and remove them from Final Cut Pro, it is also true that you can add them in in the very same way. So in this case, I'm going to go into Custom LUTs, and let's say I go back into my directory where I have an entire collection of LUTs I want to bring in. These might be conversion LUTs, these might be stylized look kind of LUTs. In either case, I'm going to just click the Shift key, select one, and then go to the very bottom while holding Shift down and select all of them, right click, and hit Copy. Now again, once I do this, if I go to Command-Shift-G and go right back to where I was, go back into Custom LUTs, I can do Command-V and just paste these LUTs in. And so now what you're going to see is using this drop-down menu, I have that entire collection of Final Cut Pro LUTs to work with. And now that I've done that, I can even mix and match these two and say choose a camera LUT, so to convert this from S-Log3 to Rec. 709. And then I can use my custom LUT section to provide a sort of more custom graded look that provides more of a stylized kind of view on this image that I want. And so that is how to add or remove custom LUTs in a couple of different ways within Final Cut Pro. Now hopefully this has been of some help to you, Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. I have a number of other Final Cut Pro and related editing tutorials on this channel that you can check out. Would more extended tutorials around color grading or shooting log footage be helpful? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.